Hi, this is Jolly Rancher and Kneecaps. Uh, today we're going to go over the gear that I was using on my Appalachian Trail through hike during the summer 2009. Okay, other gear. I, as would most people on the trail, recommend using trekking poles. These are the poles that I use. These are leaky poles. Um, they're extendable uh, in, three, in two places here. There's three segments of them. Um, some people choose to hike without them, I don't. Uh, there are physi physiological benefits to using poles. Uh, they can help your knees and they also give you balance, uh, which when you have a 30 pound bag on your back, your center of balance is off. Um, so they, are, they do help in that respect. Um, so Leaky is the best brand for tr uh, trekking poles like this. Uh, there are plenty of outfitters along the way that can tune up your poles if they do break for some reason. Um, there are higher end poles that have springs in them and shock absorbers. Uh, it's all personal preference what you want to use, um, but I would highly recommend getting a set of leaky poles for your hike. All right, headlamp. Uh, definitely carry a headlamp. Um, it's, they're much better than flashlights because you don't have to use your hands. Um, any of them will do. Uh, the more bulbs you have on them, this is a three bulb headlamp, the more bulbs you have, the more bulky it is and the more weight it is. You don't really need much more than three. You can get away with two quite easily. Um, and they pretty much all run on AAA batteries. Um, you shouldn't need to change them. If you have fresh batteries at the beginning of your hike, you probably won't need to change them, but you may. Um, but you don't need to carry the batteries. You can always buy new batteries when you get into town. Um, so just get any old headlamp. This one is a Petzl. Uh, I also saw Fuel was another popular brand. Uh, but if you go to any outfitter, you can get a standard headlamp uh, for pretty cheap. Let's see here. Okay, knife. I used this Leatherman Micra, which is a true Leatherman uh, tool. It has a knife and a whole bunch of other equipment with it, including a pair of scissors here. Um, this weighs 1.75 ounces and it's 15 bucks. Um, that's, I mean, you don't really need much more than this at all. You could probably even get away with just a standard small uh, Swiss Army knife, which just has the knife, the nail file, and the scissors. Um, I found that I wasn't using this very much. Um, so you can get away with it without not without carrying one, um, but if you want to have one just for peace of mind, then get the smallest, lightest one you can find. First aid kit, which is right here. This is significantly smaller than what I left Springer with. Um, I ended up dumping most of the stuff in my first aid kit. Um, here I have just a small assortment of band-aids and uh, antibiotic uh, wipes and everything. You really don't need to carry very much. Um, if you do get injured, you just have to get to the nearest trail town. Um, so there's no real sense in carrying 20 band-aids, you know, a whole roll of gauze. If you're injured, just get to the near, like deal with it and get to the nearest town where you can get taken care of. <coughs> Uh, the, the other pills that I have in here are um, ibuprofen, obviously. These are um, anti-diarrheal pills, just in case you do come into contact with bad water. Um, and also I have Benadryl in here. I am allergic to bee stings, so I carried an EpiPen. Um, and I also started carrying Afterbite um, in the middle of the summer because the bugs were pretty bad. The one product that I would highly, highly recommend is Body Glide. Uh, this is an anti-chafe uh, stick. You rub it uh, wherever you find that you're chafing. Uh, I applied this every morning before I started hiking uh, between my legs and it saved me a lot of discomfort. Um, you can buy, this is a, a half ounce uh, stick. You can get these at most outfitters along the trail. Uh, I think I went through two of these. Um, but this is a great product and you will, it's really worth its weight. It's definitely worth buying. Um, so first aid kit, 
don't bring anything you don't think you'll use. Um, you just have to go lightweight. The bag I have here includes my uh, EpiPen, which is actually part of my first aid kit that goes with that. Uh, you also have to carry your own toilet paper. Uh, just grab a roll and stick it in there. You'll go through it and make sure you have enough to get you to the next town. Also, carry some hand sanitizer. Use this every time after you go to the bathroom um, because that's the most important, uh, that's the easiest way that you can get sick on the trail is by not uh, properly cleaning your hands. Um, I also have in here some uh, Ben's 100% Deep Bug Spray. Uh, at the beginning of the trail, I didn't need bug spray, but towards the end, you really do need it, uh, especially in Maine. Um, this is the, the best stuff in terms of uh, weight. 100% um, Deep is going to keep the bugs off you, um, and you don't need to carry a big thing of uh, cutter, baby-friendly insect repellent. Okay? So that's that. Uh, I also have my toothbrush and toothpaste. Um, toothbrush, I cut the tail off, so you don't really need the whole handle. You can save some weight there. Um, and of course, you have a uh, travel size uh, container of toothpaste. Um, this one is a three and a half ounce. You can find those in uh, whatever store. Just make sure you go to the travel section. You can get the appropriate amount of toothpaste. Um, other things I have, camera. I have mine in a camera case. Um, you always want to bring your camera when you're on the trail. Um, there are actually some pretty neat new devices that are video cameras that are about the same size as that. Um, look to see what there is. Uh, that camera did support video functions, but it didn't take very high quality video. Uh, depends on really what you want to do on the trail. If you want to take some video, maybe get a flip video camera that can also take stills. Um, here I also have my pack cover, which is uh, just lightweight uh, yellow pack cover. I actually picked this up in a, in a trail, uh, um, trail box along the way. Uh, I didn't start out with it, but I'm glad that I picked it up um, because it did help keep my bag dry. Uh, this platypus I actually used to store my denatured alcohol for my stove. Um, they're great because they're lightweight and they collapse as you use up the fuel. Um, other people use these for water. Um, the thing about these is if you're going to fill up at a stream, they are sometimes hard to fill up just because you have to have the water flowing into it. Um, and they, it's a little more difficult than having a hard-sided container. But they are very lightweight and they don't take up space when they uh, are on the low side. Uh, lastly, what I have here is my guidebook and my journal um, and my duct tape wallet. Um, what I used on the trail was the Through Hiker Companion, which I actually cut up into sections uh, for each state. So this is the main section here uh, and just taped it to make sure everything stayed together. Uh, you can buy a book called the AT Pages and you can get the Unbound Edition. Uh, where you don't need to cut it up, it just comes without a binding on it. Um, I would recommend either the Through Hiker Companion or the AT Pages. Um, they are, there are other books that will, that are guidebooks for the Appalachian Trail, though they don't have the details that these two books do. Um, the nice thing about the AT Pages is it does have an elevation guide in it. Um, it kind of shows you what the contour of the next section is going to look like as opposed to just numbers in the companion. But both books are uh, highly recommended. Um, and always, I, I wrote in my, uh, got in my journal every night. Um, it was part of the trail for me. Um, so if you want to bring a guidebook, or sorry, a, a journal, uh, just make sure you put it in a Ziploc bag. As with all the stuff that you want to keep dry, make sure it stays in Ziploc bags.